We're here tonight to reveal a hidden story in our city's history. We're guided by the spirit of Ricardo Flores Magón. Que viva Ricardo Flores Magón! Que viva! In this variety show that we're presenting, the main genre is music. It's back and forth between us telling the story of Ricardo Flores Magón and then bouncing that off of songs. The music is meant to kind of like expand the, the, the theatrical narrative. I've been calling it a critical variety show. We are trying to imbue this history with, uh, uh, with points about what's happening today. One of the numbers that we're playing tonight is El Golpe. El Golpe is inspired on the movements of the whole kind of Arab Spring that we saw, right? The whole uprising of consciousness. And Flores Magón, that's what he dedicated his whole life to. He was a revolutionary. He was bringing revolutionary concepts to a revolutionary time in revolutionary Mexico. Ricardo Flores Magón is born in Oaxaca in 1874. He arrives in Mexico City in the midst of a 30-year reign of terror about the dictatorship of Porfirio Diaz and is radicalized among the student cohort that he joins in Mexico City. He starts publishing a newspaper, joins demonstrations against the dictator, and is put in prison. And is put in prison again, and again, and again. Finally, he's been banned from publishing in Mexico by the dictatorship, and that's what forces him into exile. One of the performers tonight, Ceci Bastida, was one of the lead singers of this, this important punk band in Mexico, uh, Tijuana No. Ceci's gonna be singing, Nadie Dijo Nada, Nobody Said Nothing. Realmente la canción habla sobre los desaparecidos in South America, de los 70s. It's a song that's really a kind of anthem of all the disappeared, all the invisible. And though it came out in the 90s, is a, is a song that I think, unfortunately, is still very relevant today. Ricardo Flores Magón arrives in LA just as it's coming into its own as a metropolis. In downtown Los Angeles, there was the Italian Hall on what we today we call Olvera Street. That place was a gathering spot for radical thinkers of various political stripes. That is the scene that Flores Magón walks into. To hear Marisol sing Shoplifters of the World, you know, unite and take over, is particularly relevant, I think, because of her own biography and connection to the history of Los Angeles. I mean, she grew up on Olvera Street, and she grew up learning how to sing in public on this street with this loaded history um, in terms of power in Los Angeles. They were Reds, they were anarchists, they were bomb throwers. That's the coverage of the LA Times. On the other side of the divide, there was also a very strong voice emerging. And it happened to be a little newspaper called Regeneración. Regeneración is a ragtag team of Mexican exiles led by Ricardo Flores Magón. But they've got passion, the, the, a deep conviction of their ideals. He is broadcasting his message back to Mexico. The news from Mexico is coming to Los Angeles. And he becomes himself, arguably, Mexico's leading anarchist uh, thinker. He's so far ahead of his time, his label in Mexico is El Precursor de la Revolución, the precursor of the revolution. And in many ways, it's exactly what he was. For us, there's this connection between the music that we do, this, this, this vision of, of wanting land and liberty, of wanting freedom, and, and being inspired by the words of Flores Magón. Bueno, y en México hay una lucha constante también por la tierra, eh, por, este, por la justicia, por la repartición equitativa. Entonces creo que sigue siendo un personaje como muy vigente. Heroes that we have now are right now, it's like a nine-year-old, ten-year-old boy or girl. They're out there and they need this as an inspiration. The next Cesar Chavez, the next person like that, the next Dolores Huerta, going back all the way to Flores Magón, is a child right now, but he's probably sitting out there tonight. To use uh, Ricardo Flores Magón's own term, it's a regeneración. You know, there's this cycle of life. We have to keep on fighting this battle over and over again, looking for that better world, that freer place, that more just place. These aren't just abstract ideas. These were people who lived, loved, fought, died. And music, what better way to bring it to, to life than, than music that can stir up those emotions deep inside us. Los aires 
Nubes oscuras no se piden ver Aunque no se espere el dolor y la muerte Contra el enemigo nos llama al deber El bien más preciado es la libertad Hay que defenderla con fe y valor Alza la bandera revolucionaria que lleva al pueblo a la emancipación Alza la bandera revolucionaria Que lleva al pueblo a la emancipación Barricadas a las barricadas Por el triunfo de la confederación A las barricadas, a las barricadas Por el triunfo de la confederación Agitan los aires, nubes oscuras no se impiden ver, aunque no se espere el dolor y la muerte, contra el enemigo nos llama el deber. El que más preciado es la libertad, hay que defenderla con fe y valor. del Río Band. What is anarchism? Is it the Molotov cocktail thrown throughout the decades? Like Sylvia Rivera throwing the first empty bottle at the cops that tried to break the party up at Stonewall. Or is it the Midnight Riders? remapping the car city of the angels with their commune on wheels? Or is it families turned farmers seizing fallow land for community agriculture in South LA? Or, or is it Occupy LA? Transforming the lawn at City Hall into Solidarity Park? You know, when you think about the history of anarchism, you don't generally think of Los Angeles. And you don't usually think of anarchism as being a Mexican thing. But tonight, we're going to tell you the story of Ricardo Flores Magón, the Mexican anarchist who made L.A. his headquarters just before and during the Mexican Revolution. 100 years before Solidarity Park, the Magonistas were agitating in the old plaza just a couple of blocks away. We're talking about the deep roots of radical politics in L.A. And in a city whose history has been whitewashed and forgotten, roots matter. So, Ricardo is born in Oaxaca in 1874, just three years before Porfirio Diaz comes to power, proclaiming himself a reformer with the slogan, no reelección, no leaders in perpetuity, no dictators, which, of course, Porfirio Diaz ends up becoming, exerting absolute authority for over three decades. 
But Ricardo, he grows up in a largely indigenous community that practices holding the land and its resources as ejidos, common lands. This is exactly the opposite of the hacienda system of private property and peonage, which Diaz fiercely defends. Ricardo is just 17 years old when he takes to the streets for the first time in a student-led demonstration against the dictator. He is arrested and thrown into the infamous rat and spider infested Belém prison. He gets out and founds his own newspaper, Regeneración. He is arrested. He emerges from Belém after 11 months and promptly goes back to Muckery King. He is arrested. Four more months in Belém. A few days after he's released, he hangs a banner from the balcony of his newspaper office that reads, La Constitución ha muerto. The Constitution has died. He is arrested. <laughs> Along with his brother Enrique. This time the sentence is five months in Belém. Upon their release, the puppet Supreme Court bans the Flores Magón brothers from publishing anything at all, ever. ever. <laughs> Deprived of the means of communicating with the masses, Ricardo, Enrique, and many of their collaborators decide to flee into exile. They cross the border into Texas, but crossing from one state into another state does not end their persecution. The brothers set about reviving Regeneración amongst the Mexican exiles and smuggling it back across the border. Agents of Diaz followed their every step from Laredo to San Antonio, from San Antonio to St. Louis. Where they are arrested on charges of defamation for writing scathing articles against the Diaz regime. Manifesto to the workers of the world. This formidable struggle between the two social classes in Mexico is just the first act in the great universe of cataclysm, which will very soon break up on the scene all over the planet. And whose final act will be the triumph of the magnanimous formula of liberty, equality, and fraternity. Which the bourgeois political revolutions have not been able to translate into physical reality because these revolutions have not dared to break the dorsal spine of tyranny, which is capitalism and authoritarianism. Come of the entire world. The solution is in the hands of the disinherited. It only requires the practice of a great virtue. Solidarity. Brothers and sisters, Chicano Son!
Voces de tu hambre, voces de tu rabia, voces de tu vacío. Voces de tu hambre, voces de tu rabia, voces de tu libertad. Brothers and sisters, camaradas. Ricardo Flores Magón is on the run again. Now he heads west, El Paso, San Francisco, Sacramento, and Los Angeles. Which in the early 1900s is one of the reddest cities in America. Socialist, anarchist, and anarcho-syndicalists exhort the workers from soapboxes at the old plaza downtown. Here, Ricardo meets Maria Talavera and her daughter, Lucia Norman. Ricardo and Maria become lovers. But they do not marry. Anarchists don't believe in such church and state-sponsored institutions. There's so much more than just husband and wife. They They're are comrades. comrades. Barely a teenager, Lucia, she also joins the movement. Meanwhile, back in Mexico, Porfirio Diaz wants to be done with this dangerous anarchist once and for all. And so do many Americans, including Harrison Gray Otis. The conservative publisher of the Los Angeles Times, the Rupert Murdoch of his day, who counts among his vast holdings nearly a million acres of land in Baja, California. The LAPD arrests Ricardo and his cohort. The sentence is 20 months. Ricardo's body finally begins to show the blows of incarceration. In 1910, Francisco Madero, a wealthy hacienda owner and mild reformist, calls for a Mexican general uprising and the revolution begins. He had once supported Ricardo and the PLM, but now believes their cause too radical. Ricardo responds by invading Baja, California. His troops succeed in capturing a string of towns along the border, but Madero counterattacks, crushing the rebellion. The revolution 
is now in the hands of the old Hacendado. <sighs> Ricardo's arrested and convicted of violating U.S. neutrality laws. He's sent to the federal penitentiary at McNeil Island off the cold gray coast of Washington State. It is a 23 month sentence. Comrades, get sal. Ricardo's release from his seventh prison sentence, he reunites in Los Angeles with Maria and Lucia, his brother Enrique and his closest comrades from the PLM. He is in poor physical and emotional health. They rent a five acre parcel of land next to one of the earliest motion picture studios in what was then called Edendale, between Silver Lake and Oak Park. They live in wood shacks. There are peach, plum, and apricot trees, and they grow their own food, selling some of it at market downtown. The gender roles are equitable. Wow. For the first time in his life, Ricardo is living the dream of his revolution. In Mexico, there's chaos, power grabs, assassinations. Hundreds of thousands of people cross the border fleeing the violence. As he regains his health, Ricardo pens a play he titles Land and Liberty, Tierra y Libertad, a slogan he coins and which Emiliano Zapata has taken up back in Mexico. Tierra y Libertad. 
For the moment, Ricardo has both. The rehearsals take place on the commune. Everybody gets a part. Maria and Lucia, his brother Enrique, his comrades in arms, friends and sympathizers. The premiere is in a theater on Spring Street, downtown. Learn to love me, assemble the ways. Now, today, tomorrow, and always. My only weakness is a list of crimes. My only weakness is, well, never mind. Marisol Hernández, a la Santa Cecilia. Now to be joined by Laura Rebolloso and Marta González.
México. Abajo la corrupción y la ilegalidad de mi país.
Juventud es convicción. Juventud es convicción. No existe un mal que te frene. México de pulso tiene. Juventud es convicción. Ay. Entre mujeres, Laura, Marta, Marisol. Shortly after the premiere of Tierra y Libertad, the LAPD raids the commune. Ricardo is arrested and his belongings confiscated. Miraculously, one of the Magonistas is able to save the Tierra y Libertad manuscript and hides it away. Awaiting trial, Ricardo passes his days in his cell at the Los Angeles County Jail. Then, on Broadway and Temple, one block away from where Occupy LA would create Solidarity Park a century later. There's a window up on the third floor from where Ricardo can look down the street. Maria and Lucia walk by in the afternoons and look up. They wave, and if the guards have left the window open, they call out to each other. Months go by, but they keep up a fervent correspondence. Letters of love y revolución. Maria de mi vida. Maria of my life. Solo tengo fe en las dos cosas que amo, tú y la revolución. I have faith only in the two things that I love, you and the revolución. Sí, María, fuera de ti y la revolución, nada hay para mí ni nada quiero. Yes, María, outside of you and the revolución, there is nothing for me, nor do I want anything. Pienso solo en ti y en la revolución. De las dos, Estoy enamorado. I think only of you and the revolución. I am in love with you both. El hijo, el hermano, tu padre o tu madre 
El hijo, el hermano, tu padre o tu madre Están en el fondo del río, están en el fondo del mar Aquí no existen los inocentes, todos morirán Ceci Bastida. Compañeros, los ilegos. Soon as you're born, they make you feel small. So deep, you feel nothing at all. Working class hero is something to be. A working class hero is something to be. Well, they'll hit you at home. They hate you at school Spit in your face And they'll call you Mexican fool You can't really function You're so full of fear A working class hero is something to be a working class hero is something to be well they'll torture and oppress you 200 more years and they expect you to wipe all your Can't really function, you're so full of fear. Working class hero is something to fear. Working class hero is something to fear. so clever, classless and free, but you're still working it off, I can see. Working class hero is something to fear. Working class hero. 
Next time, just look in the mirror. Los Ilicos. And now, we come to the final chapter in the story of Ricardo Flores Magón. He is brought to trial and convicted in the federal building, at the corner of Spring and Temple, across the street from where Occupy arrived a century later. The Los Angeles Times reports what happens at the sentencing. It was a motley throng of 2,000 people that held a considerable proportion of women with the red ribbon of anarchy pinned across their breasts as they spit venomous epithets at the stalwarts and resolute deputies of the office of the U.S. Marshal and the Sheriff. Word of the passing of sentence ran like a tongue of fire through the mob within seconds after Judge Olin Wellborn ceased speaking. The moment the courtroom doors were thrown open, Lucille Norman leapt out and ran like an antelope for the street. Screaming in the Spanish slogans of the revolutionists, Tierra y Libertad, she hurled herself into the crowd. Five automobile loads of policemen arrived within 10 minutes after the first outbreak. The officers had most of their trouble with the Mexican women in the crowd. They took advantage of their sex and resisted the officers. The women took the long pins from their hats and attempted to use them on the officers. Lucille Norman fought like a tigress until several of the officers smothered her by taking her bodily into their arms. Ricardo is transferred to the federal penitentiary at Leavenworth, Kansas. His health worsens. His old cellmate is his PLM comrade, Librado Rivera. One night, without explanation, Rivera's moved out of the cell, and two days later, Ricardo is found dead. The official explanation is a heart attack. Rivera swears he was murdered. Ricardo returns to Mexico in death. A whistle-stop ride where his casket is met by tens of thousands of mourners. When the cortege arrives in Mexico City, he is given an elaborate state funeral. We all know what Ricardo would have thought of that. In all, Ricardo Flores Magón spent some 21 years behind bars. And throughout it all, he never stopped writing to Maria and Lucia letters of love and revolucion. I'm writing you from inside where they never turn off the lights. I'm writing you from me inside, where I resist with all my might. I must tell you a painful truth. My body doesn't match my mind. It's broken. Just a token of the youth I left outside The carnage streets of Juarez The prison of Belém The plaza of old Los Angeles The state my body's in time we lived our dream on that peaceful patch of land we ate just what we sowed and with art we took a stand 
the air in here stings my lungs my legs they swell with pain their power does these things to you like a desert robin rain the haunted streets of what is the prison of Belém the plaza of old Los Angeles the state my body's in solo en ti revolución pienso de las dos estoy enamorado nada hay para mí ni nada quiero de las dos estoy enamorado and the brothers not to fall into the trap changing one state for another will throw us off the path the news spills across the border disorder everywhere inside Torn our body asunder Somehow We must Unite The haunted streets of what is The prison of Berlin The plaza of Los Angeles The state my body's in The haunted streets of what is The prison of Berlin the plaza of old Los Angeles, the state my body's in. The haunted streets of Juarez, the prison of Belém. The plaza of old Los Angeles, the state my body's in. The Martinez del Rio Band. Quetzal Flores, our musical director tonight. Juan Perez on bass. Evan Greer on drums. Dennis Gurwell on accordion. Joe City Garcia on guitars. Raquel Gutierrez, my co-host. Ruben Martinez. We'd like to bring everybody back out. <laughs> 